Okay, now let's look at an example. Now, this is directly from a question paper. They say figure two on the diagram sheet, which I've put it here, shows a uniform beam carries point loads or concentrated loads L and R are supports. So L and R are the reaction forces that you will need to calculate. That I mean the reaction on both supports by taking moments about each support. Ignore the weight of the beam. You see, they say ignore the weight of the beam because it's not even given. So they mean don't bother calculating it. Then check your answer by using Newton's third law of motion that is balancing upward and upward forces. Okay. Now, the first thing that is good to do, especially if you are still in the learning phase, is to redraw the beam according to scale because... It's not according to scale on the, on the question paper. You redraw it according to scale, so you find out the total length of the beam is 8 plus 4, which is 12 meters. You get your 12 meter beam, and you show each meter. This will help you to show each meter, so you mark each meter, and then you resketch the whole thing. And then to take moments to calculate these reactions, if you are going to calculate L, you assume that only R is the pivot or the turning point. It's attached at R. So if you're going to calculate R, you assume that L is the pivot. Okay. So we are going to calculate R first. So I'm going to write it down here. To calculate R, we assume that, or, or let me rather say, we take moments... We take moments about L. So we assume that L is the pivot. When I say L is the pivot, we are, I mean that L is the only point where the beam is attached. On the other side, it's free to move up and down. So you assume that it's not pinned or joined at this point, even though it is. Just for you to be able to calculate, because you cannot work with both of them pinned. The beam has to rotate. So now you are going to calculate R. If you take your moments at L, you are going to use L to reference all your distances. Okay, remember a moment is the, is the product of the force and the distance from the force to the pivot. Then your formula says sum of the clockwise moments are equal to sum of the anticlockwise moments. So the next step is to go to your beam and establish which forces will give you a clockwise moment so you can have them on the right on the left hand side of the equal sign and then which forces will give you an anti-clockwise moment so that you can have them on the right hand side of the equal sign you can test your moments for instance if you're looking at l if you say l is your pivot it means your beam is pinned at l if you look at that force, the 100 Newton force is going to push it down like that, making it to turn clockwise. So you make a note, that's clockwise. So the same will be for the 200 force and the 75 Newton force. That force there is 75 Newtons. So they will also make a clockwise moment. So you make a note of that. So those three moments will be together on one side because they are in the same direction. But force R, the reaction force R is going to push it down like that. It's going to make it turn anticlockwise. So R will be alone on the anticlockwise side. Now on your equation, you start off with clockwise. So we look at the first force, the 100 Newton force. Now the moment of that force will be the force times by the distance. The distance is from the force to the pivot that you have chosen. You have chosen L as a pivot. If you say you take moments about L, you mean L is the pivot. So you ask yourself, how far is 100 from L? It's two, two meters away, so you multiply by two. Then the next one will be the moment of the 200 Newton force. How far is the 200 Newton force from the pivot, which is L? It's gonna be four plus two, which is six. Multiply by six. Then the next one will be the moment of the 75 Newton force. Then you ask yourself, how far is the 75 Newton force from L? So you reference all your forces 
by L. It's the difference, it's the distance from the force to L. Now, from 75 to L, your distance there is 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you multiply that by 9. Then you turn with the clockwise. You go over the equal sign. Anticlockwise, you have force R. You say, how far is force R from L? It's 8 meters. So it's going to be R times 8. Then we do the maths. 100 times 2 is 200. 200 times 6 is 1200. Zero, zero. 75 times 9 is going to be 675. That side, 8 times R is 8R. Then we do the math. We add all that up, divide by 8, both sides. Then R comes S. Let's add that up quickly. 200 plus 1200 zero, zero, plus 675. All that divided by 8. It gives us 259.375 newtons. Okay. Let's keep that answer over there because I'm going to have to clean the board. 259.375. Newtons. Okay, so that is the answer for R. Thank you.